In the past tutorial, we created a login system that seemed to work out very well for us. And when we tested it, uh, it worked out perfectly. But the problem is, it throws an error because the user record does not exist, which means we've not even worked on the startup of the sign up page. So in this tutorial, we'll try and create a sign up page and then we'll work on it. Now, if we look at the folders we have, inside pages we have um, the home page and then we have the list and the login so we're supposed to create one for the sign up all right so we have to go to our command line and create one to do that I will right click I'll go to my folder hold my shift key then right click on an empty page and then click on this so ionic generate page what do we call the page? I'll call the page sign up. And then I'll click enter. So this takes a few seconds and it will generate a new folder for us. From that folder, we can then start coding our sign up page. As you can see, mine has uh, come up. And as you can see, it is already here. So for what we have here, we have a page that needs, uh, this page needs a form with the user details where we'll collect the user details then we pass it into this page this is where we process it then we'll, from here we pass it into a user service the user service file is here so from here we have to uh, write a code to receive it as we already wrote one one here communicates with firebase and um, logs the user in we need to do a sign up for the user from here so our sign up is supposed to receive I would like to name this properly um, user service logout user service alright so which means um, I've renamed this I just want to quickly rename it I'm just trying to follow a smooth learning, uh, naming convention so right here I will change it to user service all right so that when i look at the function i'll know it's in the service file so back to our sign up uh, service so our sign up service is supposed to receive a payload in the name of or in the form of an object this object will contain all the user details we want to save in the database now if you're wondering where i got all these functions it's on Firebase uh, documentation. Let me show you. When you visit firebase.google.com, you click on Docs, then you click on Authentication, select Web, and then um, Getting Started. From there, you can see that there are different signups here. This is a sample Google sign in, Facebook login, Twitter, GitHub, and so on and so forth. So, but when we click on getting started, we'll see from here, if you just scroll down a little, you'll see that there is a function for signing up a user. As you can see, saying create user with email and password, all right? So, if we just copy this function, we can go and implement it. So, but before then, I want to um, put another function instead. But from what we have here, um, it's called the Firebase Auth cause this uh, this function that comes with firebase and uh, this sign up is expecting at least two um, parameters one of them is email the other one is password and but in our own case we want to pass in a full payload of everything we have uh, from what we are we're receiving email password gender age and so on and so forth so we want to pass it in and two at the end of the day, uh, it will spit out an error if there is an error, okay? So I will uh, paste in my own function, which is a, a bit modified version of this, then I'll explain it to you. So first things first, you remember that this method is supposed to return an output. So every method you have in your 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 service, your service file, um, should return something because you'll be calling it from another file. We'll be calling the, this signup method from this signup file so um here is the code i have here now i'll explain it to you because uh, the method in this tutorial is to uh, not waste your time 
writing out the code one by one. So what we have here is Firebase Fire Auth. This Fire Auth is uh, the same thing as what we have here. We just um, instantiated this Firebase and then we saved it in this variable. So it's just basically the same thing with what, what you have here. All right. So now going forward, we have the normal creates uh, user with email and password, which is which we have here. But then when it comes here, that is when things change, uh, because we know that our email and password is actually inside this object. Don't worry, you get to understand it when we get to create this object. All right. So and then uh, we create a new variable. We just called it new user. You can call your own variable anything. From then on. We want to sign in this user immediately. We create the account. So this this page creates the account, and uh, if there is an error, uh, it will throw the error. But uh, this also logs in the user. So we're trying to make sure that once the user is once the sign up is complete, the login happens immediately. We don't want the user to start logging in all over again. So this function, as you can see here, which is the same thing with this one, it logs the user in. And then while the login is happening, we want to get um, somebody would have said, why don't I just call this from here? Because actually from inside here, we could have just done from what we have here. We could have just done. Um, I'm taking time out to explain this to you so that you understand uh, because it confuses so many people would have just done something like this. Very easily, very, very easily. All right, this would have just worked out for us. Then we'll put it then. But I want to do it this way because you know this function all, all already logs the user in. But I want to write it out, spell it out this way because um, apart from creating the username, user uh, account in Firebase, when you create the user email and create the password, it goes to a different section of Firebase for you to save the rest of the user details such as the gender the age the location city it goes to a different part of firebase let me show you so when you're creating this email and password goes to the authentication aspect of firebase so let's go to our console and see so email and password goes here while the rest of the user's details go here so in firebase if you don't understand this you will be at a major confusion so if we create a new user this is where the email and password gets saved. But then the user's gender, city, and the whole lot of things get saved here, which is the database, all right? So that is why we, we after logging in the user, logging in the user makes us make sure that this uh, sign-up was successful. Then we try and save the rest of the user's details in the database so this is how you save something in the database in firebase in firebase you make a reference to the the place you want to save it for instance in us this is the location we want to save something in the firebase so we have firebase we're making reference to database remember the first time we made reference to the auth so in the database we make reference to the database that is we're making reference to this and the location we're pointing to is users so that's the node we want as you can see, it doesn't exist yet. We we'll just have this. So we're trying to make sure that under users, under Ionic upload slash users slash um, something else, we can save the user's details. All right. Now, this is Ionic upload slash users using child dot child. You remember that this variable refers to this. So when we use dot child, we are putting another slash. So see this dot child as slash. Then this auth user I or authenticated user dot UID is what uh, the user ID of this person. You remember we created the user account, and um, we are retrieving the user ID by saying just this dot user ID. So we are doing user slash slash the user ID then we're dumping the rest of the payload inside it which is everything we got from the registration form including the gender and everything we'll come back here and revisit this thing so you understand it better but by then we would have created a sign up form so that it will be easier to um, understand so just a quick recap uh, what we did was 
we signed up this user using the email and password only then we signed in the user the user is now logged in and then we retrieved the user id from since we've already signed up and then under the user id we saved the rest of the user details including the age the gender or whatever else must have come from the sign up form all right hope you understand this now see you in the next video where we'll uh, make things clearer by creating the sign up form thank you very much see you